かけあけきてけよおあふまいらぎえへまよろおてこおがてにえおがまのえぺぴてあえほらねいがあひかろわかるくいてよねはうかわかわ I remember many, many years ago, many a times going to archives with Auntie Yuna, and I thought, oh, here we go. And she'd say, photocopy this boy, photocopy that. Had no idea what I was photocopying. Wasn't until maybe, not months, maybe a year or so later, I decided to turn one of those papers. <laughs> and it sent me spiralling on a journey of self-discovery. And I'm still on that journey. What Archives New Zealand holds is roughly 7.2 million archives. The obvious high visibility archives are the Te o Waitangi, He Whakaputanga and the Suffrage Treaty are well-known constitutional documents, but they're just the tip of the iceberg. It's not just the opportunity to access records and archives for curiosity, but it's an absolute right for people to understand who they are, how they've interacted with government, their place in New Zealand, their place in the world and their place in our society. It's about place, it's about acknowledging that um, when, we, when we are working, particularly in a digital world, digital can become disconnected and a sense of place is always really important for Māori and this is a place where our taonga can be safe but also we can reconnect with them. Tahuhu is a really exciting project. It's the opportunity of a generation. By being linked to the National Library, it means that we can leverage the strengths and the opportunities of both institutions. We also have Ngā Taonga Sound and Vision that are housed currently within the National Library, and they are another key partner that will bring a lot of value and mana to this project. My first question around this new bill was, where are mana whenua, have we approached them? This particular land that the National Library and the new Archives New Zealand building will be on part of the traditional Pipitea Pā whenua. This was their neighbourhood, this was where their whare were, this was where they grew their kai, where they raised their families and where they buried their dead. We want to tell the story of Waifetu how our people were forced off the land, alienated from the land, were never allowed back into Wellington to gather our resources. And over the years, our history has been suppressed, denied, and this is an opportunity for us to actually tell our story, our connections, and the original people of those particular lands close to the project are the descendants of Waifetu. Co-design, for me it's a really simple concept, it means designing together. Having the designers being the architects, Warren Amani, and Taranaki Whanui Te Atiawa Thurudangi, sitting at the same table, uh, looking at what the concept, what the story of this place is. We knew a bit about Rangi. We knew that he was not going to hold back on his thoughts. He challenged us all the way through and I think early on we decided that actually if we really opened up to this process there was something special that could happen. My job as a mana whenua creative is to bring our worldview and our approach into projects like this. What I try to do is to use the stuff that people call art which is actually our culture the things that convey and keep alive and relevant, ethics, values, norms, codes of conduct, you know, all of those sorts of things that govern our interactions and relationships. To try and figure out how to embed that into, into the building, not so that it just gives us visibility, but actually that it plays a role in decolonising the institution and sets a new paradigm for a change in culture of the organisation. I come from the Pacific, I come from the second generation of family from the islands, um, from Samoa specifically. For most people when they look at it, it's just poles and a roof and a floor. For me what's special about the whale is that it's not about just the architecture, it's actually about how you inhabit the whale and that's what gives it life, its sense of pride or mana, that's what makes the whale unique. There's a huge difference between 
uh, being handed a piece of material and then going away and developing that up in isolation from the mana whenua advisor and actually having them in the room working alongside you. That's pretty special right there in terms of co-design. The Māori voice, view, perspectives haven't actually been at the design tables for our laws, for our culture, for our almost anything. In fact, I think I'd go so far to say as Māori culture has largely accessorised the way our country has been over the last 200 years. So to actually be sitting together, neither Te Ao Pākehā, the Crown, local public authorities, nor Māori are actually used to being in that space. It's been our desire as Māori to be in that space and to have more say and um, authority and control over what's being designed for us. Um, so it's all new. There have been some stumbles along the way uh, and I think it's about acknowledging those, accepting that that's part of creating partnerships and moving forwards. With anything that has a new lens, a new approach, it requires people to be vulnerable. It requires a, a stage of contest. Yeah, <laughs> I've learned heaps, heaps more about project management. That's why we've got other people on our team. Yeah, the project managers are really important. What is kind of happening here is a speaking across cultures. Um, and a partnership across cultures and a whole bunch of like an uncertainty and ambiguity that comes with that. I think it's like truly partnership in action, I think, is, is how I describe it and all of the complexities that, it, that are involved in that. This project is a chance to show some leadership mm. in this space. You, know, you actually need to acknowledge what you don't know and then you need to open that space up to let other people come in and actually share that view and, and you end up with a much deeper outcome, richer outcome. It's a really technically challenging site from a physical sense, from the design constraints. It's effectively a, a roof on a basement. Within the space we're trying to reference to the cultivations of gardens, which were here for many years. Pipitea is obviously referring to pippy beds. Those are now underneath uh, the reclamation. You know, like midden shots, they're like, like a whole kete bag. They have bunches like this, of really tightly shells sitting on top of each other. I think for me, the excitement has to rest with the, the co-design work that's gone on. That's where the magic is in the design. That's where the meaning of the buildings and the places really starts to come together in the partnership with Māori. The integrated, tangible co-design elements will be a daily reminder for our kaimahi and our visitors of that relationship with iwi Māori and mana whenua. How important is it to co-design with mana whenua? Uh, it's critical. We've got the building which houses you know, the entire history of the government of New Zealand on this place which was a past site where people lived for a long time and it has a contentious history. It's right for a project of this nature. A government entity with obligations to Te Tiriti or Waitangi, it's absolutely fundamental. Not only locally but globally, we're deep enough now into deconstructing you know, the colonial project and recognising its role on Indigenous communities. And New Zealand's really at the forefront of trying to figure out how to fix some of that stuff. And, and we're there too. This process brings life to something that is uniquely Aotearoa. You can't replicate this building or this experience anywhere else in the world and that's really special. Ask me what my favourite design element is, not fear. <laughs> I love the Kumara mounds. It's so much fun. The facade's going to be beautiful. How it's going to play with the light, how it's going to change across different seasons in the day. I want to see a lot more children here because my vision for this is that it becomes a destination so that people don't just come here on a class visit, that they want to come here with their families because there's interesting things here. We muko our people. It's one of our visual languages that spoke of our connection to flora, fauna, to the geography of the sites that our people occupied. That offers us the opportunity to treat this as if it's a living entity. I mean, that's how our people deal with things, right, when it comes to whare. Uh, ko rangi ki pa tōku ingoa, heke mai, 
i te, te tihi o tōku nei maunga a he mōkahau wari e mihi kawatsi ki o kotou. Nō rite te nā kotou. I suppose the fundamental question that I started with was what's the nature of the relationship of this new building to the whenua that it sits on? That is the height of the uh, ground outside, so you actually walk down into the building. And so it's this idea of actually physically doing this deep dive, walking into the land, peel back the layers. We've also gone for a treatment on the walls here that will show the actual embedding of pippy shells into that plaster. When I looked at the scale of it, I saw it as like a person kneeling on the land, kind of like on one knee, bent down, kind of crouching, ready to kind of stand up and pounce. Treating the rain screen facade like a skin, we looked at this technique of embossing or debossing, either pushing out or pushing in, much like um, goosebumps. One of the primary aspirations at the beginning of our conversation was, is that we wanted to be visible in the landscape again, because this was a living site, this is a place where people live. So, you know, things are changing. And what we're trying to do is to build institutions that seek to speak into the future and accommodate our dreams and aspirations for the future. To be honest, it, um, coming into tonight, I, I know my family's connection to Pipitea and I know the sadness that has, you know, been felt in the past and known in history, but tonight was kind of quite heartening. It's really heartening to think that, you know, we're going to have a building of significance um, that has a tell Māori lens on it. And it being a living space where people will be encouraged to engage with our history and um, like it's a good opportunity to be able to like learn about your culture yeah the building that, that holds the nation's memory needs to it, it it needs to show that it respects really what it what it contains and you know i think that i think he's he's nailed it this co-design process we hope and we aspire that we can be Māori in this space. We can bring our Māori, whakaaro Māori, our mātauranga Māori to the table and we can be part of uh, shaping our future together. My generation, the next generation, deserve a more honest New Zealand. Are we just going to continue to borrow from Māori culture for the future of New Zealand, the future of architecture, or do we start to look at this as a new way of thinking about built form and space and experience. I think that's a pretty exciting moment for architecture in New Zealand and design. It's incredibly important that we undertake this co-design process with Mana Whenua and it will be the basis and set the tone for how we work together across the three institutions. The generosity of Mana Whenua and sharing the stories of what happened on this Whenua can't be underestimated. Tonight was about it's time for the Ahika story to be told and it's time for the Ahika to start blazing and, and being contagious, being like a, a, a ravaging positive fire that warms everyone within in the city. For me, my aunt has been hurt, my aunties and uncles have been hurt.